With Starfield around the corner, I'm sure I'm not the only one fixated on finding out more about the world and its factions. And just in the heat of my internet sleuthing, Bethesda themselves decided to release three animated stories that help give more context to the world itself, specifically the factions. The factions covered in the videos are the Vanguard, the Free Star Collective, and Ryujin Industries. I'm extremely interested in this and what they have to offer, and I'll break down my thoughts on each one after I watch them. Alright, so first things first, let's get the general stuff off the table for these animations. The animation is well done for short context videos. Low FPS work but still very pretty looking and draws your attention. It kind of makes me feel like I'm watching an episode of Love, Death, and Robots or something. When it comes to sound design, I also like what they did here. All of the animations that they did actually don't feature voice acting, which at first I was a little unsure of, but the more I watched them, the more I understood what they were going for. The space that the lack of voice acting gave to the rest of the sound design made the other aspects in the video pop, at least in my opinion. And with that, I'm going to move into the first animation we have here, The Hand That Feeds, Ryujin Industries. This one was intriguing. A pair of thieves is seen parkouring around the city, stealing stuff and selling stuff. Typical Bethesda thief business. When they encounter someone with some sort of box with a symbol or something. The two thieves start to argue. The man seems to want to steal this item from the frightened individual while the woman wants to spare him. Then they start to do that thing where they wrestle with a gun, which is definitely the safest thing you could ever do in this situation. Until the man gets grazed with a bullet and then he backs off. As a reward for protecting this man with the box of god knows what, the woman is hired as an agent of Ryujin Industries. Not a lot to take away from this. The main thing that I'm getting from this video is the fact that we should be able to do a lot of thievery. Like there's no surprise that we're going to be able to join a faction after the exchange of services, so that's not really where my jaws hitting the floor. But what I did like to see was the possibility of a profitable theft system. Theft in Bethesda games like Skyrim and Fallout was never really profitable. Don't get me wrong, in some aspects it was really good, but it always felt like a hassle more than like a hustle in the later half of the game at least. Maybe a better fence and bigger items to steal from bigger name players would be really good in a title like this. Regardless, I'm not really getting a whole bunch from this, which is probably why I'm not going to join this faction. Next animation, the settled systems where hope is built, the Freestar Collective. Collective? A lady is seen working on a ship that's missing a part. She goes around town asking several people if they know where to find a spare, but to no avail. After wandering around the outside of the town, the woman witnesses some sort of stick up, I assume, involving an automatic weapon. So logically, the woman walks up and knocks the thief out in one punch. She later finds out that the man had a ship with a spare that she needed. There's a little bit more story in the way of flashbacks. The lady's parents seem to serve in the war regarding the Freestar Collective that clearly affects and motivates her. I guess from this animation you can get an idea of the Freestar Collective's morals. The idea that someone would take a fist fight to an automatic rifle fight says a lot about a faction. They're gonna be the neutral good ones, I assume. Overall, solid animation, and it was cool seeing the city involved as well. And who knows, you know, maybe I might play this faction. I usually play the morally good faction just because, at least on my first playthrough, just to see the clean way through. It was cool seeing the battle animation that they made. Again, low FPS, but still very pretty to look at. And on to the final animation. The final animation, Supra et Ultra, follows a space delivery man, I think he was, who visits New Atlantis on a delivery. Whenever he gets there, he gets inspired by the Vanguard, the faction that the story covers. The Vanguard seemed to be more rooted in law. This was said to be the biggest city in the entirety of the game, so I'm not surprised that this is going to be like the police of the game. Again, not too shabby of a faction, and not too shabby of an animation as well. We see some really cool dog fighting depictions, which is easily the most exciting thing that I've seen out of all of these animations. Dog fighting is something that's been long sought out for in these space exploration type games, and although we've seen it in other games like Elite Dangerous or No Man's Sky, they either fall too short on ease of use, or either fall too short in depth alone. It's also worth mentioning now that the currency in this game looks really cool. It reminds me of the Mandalorian style of currency with these slick slates that stack really nicely. I don't know, it's a small thing for me, but details go a long way in RPG games, as we all know. Atlantis as a city looks very, very pretty and I'm excited to play in it. The main character for this one was inspired by the city and its heights to become part of the Vanguard. And I must say, it's very believable. 
Wandering around in a city like this and seeing the people in the communities, as well as actually talking to characters in the city, might actually push me to be part of the vanguard when I play the game. This animation is definitely my favorite one out of the lot, just because it shows a lot of the potential that the game has. Regardless, that's all the animations that we got. I'm not gonna lie, I did expect a little bit more context. I would have liked these to be a bit longer. Something more in line of what Overwatch was doing with their short story animations. I know that they had more of a character basis to go off of, and this is more of an RPG game, so it's hard to do that. But even something that just focused on the lore would have been really good to know going into the game. But that's just me. You know, you get what you get, you don't throw a fit. The faction that I'm most excited to look into deeper out of these animations definitely has to be the Vanguard. It's not that the other ones aren't cool or don't have their attracting factors. I just don't have as much context into what I'm going to expect. Regardless, let me know what you think about the animations, what factions you're excited for, and maybe I missed something in these animations that you can enlighten me on. I'm sure I did. I only gave these a few watch throughs and then the watch throughs I have during editing. So maybe there's some cool Easter eggs or side plots that I miss that actually have a lot of context to them. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like the video. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. I release videos every Sunday. And get hyped for Starfield. You know, I am so hyped for this. Tom Howard hasn't put his foot into something as much as this, at least from an outside perspective. And of course, that goes for the team as well. Anyways, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, it's my birthday week, so I've been partying. I've been partying hard, if you can't tell by my voice. So I'm gonna do the fade out, and I'm gonna dance while I do it. I'm dancing right now. You can't see me, but I'm getting down. Hey, hey. A what? A what? A A